Ann Coulter's on the line, and the mess doesn't get any better thanks to Congress. How you doing, Ann? Fantastic. <laughs> it's like a rally all over again. Oh, my gosh, that was fun. And I was just thinking, I know I'm always um, giving your listeners assignments, but but they've always been good assignments, haven't they? Oh, yeah. You have to listen to this entire press conference. <laughs> you make uh, When you're making a four-course meal tonight, cleaning <laughs> your entire apartment, you will have time. It is better than anything on TV. He is magnificent. He is. He's <laughs> just, he, he just doesn't, you know, he doesn't give in. He doesn't let them walk all over him, and he's just priceless because... Because he, he pins them every single time. This was awesome. It was totally awesome. And like half of the question and answer, part of what was so fun is these, these reporters plaintively, you know, saying, we are not fake news. <laughs> <laughs> I, please, I am very professional, she says. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was it. But, you know, to be fair, Trump is right. I can't watch, and I, I, I obsessively watch MSNBC and CNN. I have been for decades the New York Times' most loyal reader. I can't do it anymore. None of my friends, I mean my few remaining friends who are still subscribing <laughs> to the New York Times, we can't do it. It's not even fun. It's just slander and lies, and you're not going to learn anything. No. No, I so feel I think cheated. He's right, if they told the truth, it would be. You can still argue about it. Mm -hmm. There's still points to be made. If I, if I were on the liberal side or the anti-American side, um, <laughs> but but when they just come out with lies, that's not even fun. No, it's not, and it's and it's now so mean spirited uh, in tone because yeah. he pointed out their tone is what's so awful. Uh, yeah. You're right. It's a, it, the debate. We'll have a debate. I can debate all day long about the issues, but but it's this meanness. It's this uh, slighting of people and and destroying the slander that goes on. I mean, uh, General Flynn is a is a a character has always been a character, but a decent, loyal American. And to watch him get dragged through the mud the way he's been dragged through for the last week and a half has really just uh, ticked me off beyond uh, compare. Yes, I hope they do release the the transcripts. It's, I mean, I watched a very small amount of of the slanderous fake news last night, and it really it really was funny. <laughs> They're all just speculating. Well, if it shows, you know, X Y. Well, that would be well. Yeah, okay, and you know, if um, we have photos of of um, you know. Chris Hayes committing child molestation. Yeah, that would be bad, too. But we don't have any of your if stuff yet. Right, exactly. Well, look, uh, you know, I was at, uh, I got Skyped into the presser on, on Tuesday. Oh, I heard. That. I wanted to tell you, and that was a great question, and it was an important question. Well, because how many more questions was I going to? Was anyone going to ask about General Flynn? It was as if the world stopped and nothing else was going on, and I was just furious by that, you know, about that. Because originally everybody was prepared with a Flynn question, but once it was asked eighteen times yeah. by eighteen separate outlets, what was the point? Yeah, yeah. No, and also that was something that had been, um, for those of you who weren't watching the press conference, um, it, it was about the security at mm -hmm. Mar-a-Lago when they're discussing, you know, important international issues, and I forget, you know what the word is, what skiff. they call it. Yeah, the skiff. Skiff. Um, and you, you said, do you have that there? And I'm a mile away from Mar-a-Lago. Are you keeping our, our secret secret? And that was one of those things that had been dropped out into the news without ever getting an answer to right. it. So it was nice to get a direct answer. Yes, they have one. Oh, I was um, accused. My son accused me of that being a planted question so that Sean Spicer would have an opportunity to describe the skiff. He said, Mom, what do you know about a skiff? I said, Derek, I've been doing this for three decades. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I know yeah. more than you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also liked how at today's press conference with the emperor god Trump, um, <laughs> how, how he went through, how, and it's true, and this is how I began my column this week, he's accomplished more than any president in this amount of time. I mean, it really is stunning, this whirlwind of activity, the point of my column being, what on earth has Congress been doing? I, seriously, I would like a schedule. What is Paul Ryan's day like every day? Okay, mm. he wakes up, gets to Congress. Then what? Is he just sitting there playing words with friends? Trump has had to staff 
one entire branch of government and has to wait for the Senate to confirm his nominees. Um, the House has already passed six Obamacare repeals. Suddenly they can't pass another one now that they have a president who will sign it? Yeah, well, that's and that shows that they never had any intention. It's all been for show. No, the Congress, not all of them. Some are very good. I, I, I have a word. Seven. Seven, so seven are I, very good. No, I think you're right. I mm-hmm. will make a list, and I think it's about seven. Yes. But other than that, and uh, sorry, I'm giving your listeners an assignment again. You really got to start calling your representatives and mm-hmm. senators and saying, knock off this stop Trump business, because that is what the Congress is doing. They sit around, have long lunches, go to the House gym. Um, and then call up the Washington Post so they can say they're shocked and appalled by whatever it is Trump's doing. They're exactly like the courts. Um, are the entire government bureaucracy, other than Trump himself, is part of the Stop Trump movement, yeah. including on this, this temporary pause on Muslim immigration. As I point out in the column, just a year ago, the House of Representatives overwhelmingly po- po- um, passed a bill that didn't have a mere temporary pause on refugees from Syria and Iraq, but a permanent ban. Mm-hmm. Permanent. No, no, no time limit. And, and people like Representative Michael McCall are out there with their press releases saying, I introduced a bill that will st- protect Americans from ISIS. But then Trump puts in this absolutely comparatively teeny tiny short travel but ban on those two countries as well as five others designated as terrorist countries for obvious reasons um, and McCall rushes to the to the Washington Post to say this goes too far yeah. they are all part of the never Trump movement why don't, why don't they pass that bill again and send it up to Trump exactly well I had uh, S- uh, Congressman Brian Mast on this morning and I had Congressman Ron DeSantis two of the seven that are any good and they both said that all they're doing on the Hill is press conferences TV appearances Chuck Schumer sits in front of a camera eight out of 12 hours per day <laughs> That's not their job, you know. Well, I don't care if Schumer does it, because frankly, I don't think that's helping their side. The more, the more America sees of that mug, the better off we are. But no, I'm talking about Republicans here. They have signed up with the Never Trump movement, and it is outrageous how they're allowing Trump to just be attacked from every side. What is Mitch McConnell doing? What is Paul Ryan doing? Why are they not impeaching this Judge Roberts? I mean, this is a shocking, shocking decision. Um, it, it is completely unconstitutional against the law. There are, I've, I will address this more fully next week. I started to get into it this week, but again, I have a word limit. There's absolutely no question but that the president has complete plenary authority to exclude any alien um, in the public interest of the United States. And the, the, the courts have no, no capacity to second-guess him on that. And the court has been holding that. I mean, you can go back at least to the Chinese exclusion cases in 1898, and probably every two years since there. And there is a major Supreme Court case where they reiterate um, Immigration is the province. These are, this, these are political acts. This is part of foreign policy. Congress has written a law giving the president the authority to exclude anyone in the public interest. We have no authority to review this. It's insane what those, that court has done, Ninth Circuit, of course, most, most overruled circuit court. And, and one of these judges has got to be impeached. I mean, just because they want to be, get a glamorous write-up in the New York Times is not a reason to be ignoring the Constitution and the laws we live under. This is utterly lawless, and um, the, you know that's the other thing these guys can do to get off my watch list. Pass one of the Obamacare repeals and impeach Judge Ro- Robart. And, and, you know, to, and to really uh, hold their colleagues' feet to the fire. I tell my guys, the good guys, what are you, why are you allowing um, your colleagues to avoid the obvious? I mean, there are some things you guys promised. If you don't keep those promises, we will replace you. And if you don't believe that, just look over your shoulder at what just happened. I mean, yeah. they, they seem to think that, uh, that it's over now and they can all sit back on their laurels and they got all the uh, three branches and then now, you know, they, they can do nothing and get away with it. It's not going to happen. Uh, this, the, just as the crazy lunatics on the left seem to be mobilizing behind, uh, you know, OFA and all the rest of the Soros funded things, uh, we're, we're organizing once again as a grassroots. We're going to hold their feet to the fire. We finally got a president who, as you point out in your article, will sign the damn bills write them pass them let's get this done 
Yes, amazingly, at that retreat the Republicans had in Philadelphia after the inauguration, um, <laughs> um, Speaker of the House Ryan and and Senate Leader Mitch McConnell, they present their their breakneck agenda for the Republicans called literally called the two hundred day yes, plan. plan. <laughs> two hundred no, pull up one of those six Obamacare repeals the House already passed, dust it off, mm-hmm. reintroduce it, and let's get that up to the president. Yeah, and listen, I don't even know where half the cabinet appointees are. What happened to Ben Carson? Is he still around? I mean, no, these these are nominees that aren't even getting a hearing. Um, it's an outrage. It really is. And and where are the where's Congress demanding that this be done? Where are the Republican senators demanding that his nomination be brought to the floor? No, they're all part of the Never Trump movement. This Ugh. is the GOP, the Washington establishment, the brain trust that delivered us loss after loss and just massive unemployment throughout the middle class, wages flat. This is what this is why Trump is our president. Um, but but uh, and you, Trump you, is now realizing, if he didn't already, that it is going to be massive resistance throughout the judiciary, throughout the legislative branch, throughout the bureaucracy. Now we know throughout the deep state, our intelligence agencies, um, which which do require a prosecution here. This absolutely. Really outrageous. Yeah, absolutely. But let me tell you something. If they were not watching yeah. this press conference today, Congress, they better watch it tonight on YouTube because that joint session is going to sound just like that, only he's not going to be attacking the media. He's going to be attacking them for what I they're not doing. So. Oh, yeah. Trust oh, me. Oh, I hope so. That's a dream come true. <laughs> it would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> Especially since so many are not going to attend, you know. It's like they really, they're not going to do this and they're not going to shop here and nobody cares. You know, I, I think the immigrants all stayed home from work today, but I haven't really noticed anyone's missing or any stores are closed. <laughs> no, <nor have> I. <laughs> I can't wait till the women stay home. That ought to be a, a hoot. <laughs> it's like that's March fourth or something. Look, Anne, they they've made themselves look absolutely ridiculous, and I'm loving it. I mean, I've never had this much fun in in 26 years in this market. I have never had uh, more fun than I'm having right now. Just watching the squirming going on. They never they never asked the conservative media or a person like me never got into a press conference before, and now they're all ticked off that that they're not getting asked questions and we are. I love it. No, that's right. There was a great headline on Drudge yesterday. I don't know if it's still up, but um, media calls Trump Hitler right. angry. He won't call on them. Right. <laughs> and the article pointed out it was a good item that it, that he's called on plenty of never Trumpers. Um, mm. People were adamantly opposed to him. But one thing they, th- that's different from the New York Times and the Washington Post is they never compared him to Hitler. <laughs> no, they never did. But hey, listen, you know, as I said, um, the chaos that's going on now could have been predicted. Um, you know, the fact that they passed six, six Obamacare repeals um, when Obama was president and now can't manage to put one forward with a president who signed it is a cry and shame. And you can read Ann's article, by the way, The Silence of the Lambs Congress. And I had the image of them all in that Hannibal Lecter mask, <laughs> you know, with butterflies floating around. <laughs> It's a beautiful thing. We linked it up at the website. And thank you. Go go revel as I will. Tingle on. <laughs> Good to talk to you, Joyce. You too, Bye-bye. Anne. Bye-bye.